Excellent, excellent. So welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. So for the last uh, 12 years, Cash, our guest, better known as Budget Traveler, has been revolutionizing what it means to travel on a budget. Stylish, a bit of luxury, uh, doing things well, but at an affordable way, an affordable price. Cash and I have met at many conferences uh, over the years. Uh, we go back probably 11 years, we think, and actually got to hang out in Edinburgh where uh, Cash lived for many years, um, where he introduced me to a great pub. I recall it very well, down this little alley. And, uh, and then also we went out for curry. <laughs> it was good, it was really good. Ah, uh, memories. Yes, exactly. Um, Cash won the 2016 National Geographic Travel Blogger of the Year Award, which is quite the honor. Um, he's also author of The Grand Hostels, Luxury Hostels of the World. So you really need to visit his site where he reviews hostels that are destination worthy. You know, uh, people will choose destinations based on the review of a, of a resort or a really unique hotel. So why not a hostel as well? So uh, I really uh, encourage you to visit his site because there may be hostels that will inspire, you know, certain destinations. Um, when it comes to hostels, cash is the guy. So we really wanted to, uh, to get him on here. So thank you so much, Cash, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, uh, 12 years, where the time flies. But uh, <laughs> oh, the memories of Edinburgh and the Jolly Judge pub and that uh, cracking fire, having a couple of beers and then the curry. Yeah, I'm, uh, I miss Edinburgh. Uh, so yeah. Oh, I, I, didn't, I couldn't remember the name of the pub. That's Jolly right, Judge. the Jolly Judge. I remember, I can ha I see the image of it, and yes, the fire <laughs> there, and it's really tiny. So it's off of the, it's, what's the, the street called, the Grand? The Royal Mile, the Royal, the Royal Mile, the main Mile. stretch that goes way, right from the castle all the way down to the Queen's Palace. Right, and it's off of that, the Royal Mile, and it's called the Jolly Judge, so if you're in Edinburgh, it's a good place to go. But that's not our topic for today. <laughs> <laughs> So, we can do another day about pubs. That's um, true. It's true. So just to start off, um, can you tell us a bit about your journey to become the expert on traveling in style and on a budget? So uh, as Janice kindly uh, mentioned that I've been doing this now for 12 years and my whole uh, journey towards uh, stylish budget travel, I guess when I initially started traveling, uh, at university, I was very poor. I was an international student in Scotland and I didn't have much money to travel. So hostels were the only way I could see the world. Uh, thanks to Ryanair, this horrible, but convenient low cost airline. Um, I managed to go and travel to places all around Europe and hostels really opened up the world of travel to me. But as I grew older, as many of us probably in the room, Sometimes you can't hack it in doms anymore and people snoring like hyenas all around you and you, you, you think you're not cut out for this anymore. And then I started doing some research uh, of hostels around about 2012 and um, I discovered this new world of hostels emerging where you could get a private room. Um, so I started documenting these and calling them luxury hostels, not luxury in the sense of traditional luxury, but luxury in the sense of experiences. So that's how I started uh, my, my book and my guide to luxury hostels. And uh, I, I kind of coined the term of stylish budget travel, which I think a lot of us uh, really enjoy. And it's about that balance between experience, cost, and, and having fun. Yeah, to, to make that balance. Yeah, I, mean, this, I still go to hostels. So I love hostels for the for the experience, like you say, it's an experience that's unique. But if you can get that hostel experience along with, um, along with uh, a bit of you know comfort and style, uh, then why not? So I know why I think hostels are great for solo travelers, but maybe you want to give your perspective on that. I, hostels are great because the best thing, or the, the one of the most mis representations about hostels that they're only for young people but hostels now are for people of all ages and I think uh, as I discovered in an Instagram post yesterday that it's the last true democratic institution in the world where everybody is equal 
once you enter a hostel, it doesn't matter what's your, where you're from, what's your age, everybody's treated equal and everybody's welcome. So whether you're having a beer in the bar, everybody talks to you, nobody's awkward. Uh, and um, when I started hosteling in my, in, my, in my young age, after university, I was very awkward, shy. I was very unsure of myself and hostels opened up a whole new world of people and and learning cultures and languages and cooking meals around the hostel kitchen or learning how to say cheers or learning how to say more, not so maybe complimentary words, you know, so, or, you know, learning the square words, you know, the traditional language of, 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 of travel. Um, so, you know, it, that's, you know, it made me, gave me a lot of confidence and, and made me a more confident traveler, made me more confident about myself and, and, you know, travel is a mirror to yourself, you know, and that's the best kind of travel where you, you learn something about yourself with every trip. And that's where hostels really were, uh, were a great stepping stone to learning about life. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I started hostels when I was 15. Um, on my first trip, but I, you know, continuing to do so, continue to stay at hostels, even at my age, right, is a wonderful experience because, in certain ways, I become the more exotic one in the room, right? Uh, I, I, people find me curious, interesting, right? And but I love the 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 uh, democratization of travelers. I love the idea that everyone is equal when they walk through the door. Mm -hmm. You know, you can meet someone who is the, vi uh, the vice president, president of a, of a large firm who just chooses that mode of travel, or you can meet someone who's like a student and, but everyone's equal. I do, I do really like that. So when it comes to luxury hostels, can you tell me what's the difference between a luxury hostel and a hotel? So a luxury hostel is what I define as a traditional hostel where you have dorms, but on the second floor, you'll have dorms, but on the third and fourth floor, you'll have private rooms and family rooms. And even on the top floor, you might find apartments. So it's basically all kinds of travelers can be accommodated in a luxury hostel. But uh, it's not just about the types of rooms, it's about the experience. And I think that's where luxury hostels stand out because you can find a gym, you can find a cinema, you can find a rooftop bar, you can find, um, you can get, have yoga classes. So I'm staying in a hostel in Athens called Selena, which has a rooftop bar, it has a gym, it has a wellness room, it has a cinema room, it has all these great facilities. And it doesn't matter if you're staying in a private room or a dorm, you can access all those facilities which is wow. something you don't find in hotels. In hotels, you have to sometimes pay to get access to all the good stuff. Right. So what's the biggest misconception about hostels then? I think the, the misconception, what we touched upon was that it's only for young people. And I think as it, hostels have matured, we travelers have matured, hostels have matured. It's now a place where you said where business travelers go, where young people go, where old people, mature travelers go. People who backpacked in their seventies are backpacking in hostels at the moment. So it's, um, it's really changed and they're no longer just these, you know, it's like not, it's not like a concentration camp. Uh, sorry, they're not the best example to use, but they're not all the bunk beds are, are, are together. It's not claustrophobic. They're well spaced out. You can have space to breathe. You can have your own space. Um, you can, um, yeah, you can have a clean toilet, a clean shower. You know, the, it's, the design is modern and stylish. It's uh, very, very surprising. It's the biggest surprise I see when people walk into a hostel and they stay like, I'm in a hostel or I'm in a fourth star boutique hotel. You yeah. can't tell the difference. Yeah, I, I, uh, watching some of your videos, they're amazing. Like the different styles and how unique they all are. And I think that that's something that um, uh, in terms of misconceptions, that they are basically all dorms. Right. And they are just, you know, housing that's not there to be enjoyed, but there to rest your head at night and then off you go during the day. And actually, way back when hostels were closed during the day. <laughs> right. But now it's a full on experience, it seems to me. Yeah. Hostels are now they changed so much, like even in the last five years, um, 
in, in, in the, the rate of evolution, because now you have hostels that focus on gourmet and food experiences. So F and B, food and beverage is becoming a big part of the experience. So particularly when I when we go to Portugal, which is where all my favorite hostels are, you have a rooftop bar, you have the best restaurant in town, a place called the Independent Hostel and Suites. Uh, it's right in the center of Lisbon and it's the place to go and it attracts all the it attracts the influencers, it attracts the, 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 the lawyers, the doctors, uh, the fashionistas, everybody goes there. And it's not something you would think you're in a hostel anymore. You think you're in somewhere in a five-star uh, hotel bar or something. And that's the crazy thing is that yeah, what is it's open and accessible. Because I've heard this over and over again, and I've seen them win the Oscars awards, right? What is it about Portugal that they they're so... I think Portugal, it's, it's the, the warmest, nicest people you'll meet. And there's a, they have a natural flair for welcoming and hospitality. And they really enjoy welcoming people. You know, the, it's like the Greeks. I would say the Greeks and the Portuguese is hard to distinguish. They both are very kind and empathetic people, which is an, an, another quality when I talk about hostels and why hostels are special is that you meet people with great empathy and great and hunger to learn about your cultures and to, to talk and to, to listen. And you always meet somebody interesting every time you go into a hostel. So um, that's why uh, I, I think uh, Portuguese hostels are the best and uh, the design and, and facilities are incredible. Uh, they're really on a different level. So I recommend if you are thinking about your, your first hostel trip, I would say Portugal is a great place to lose your hostel in virginity. <laughs> yes, why not? Eh? It is. It's very interesting. Um, you know the social aspect of it of hostels. There, it's very, very rich, and um, it's it's interesting in that when you're talking with people there, you can get insight into their home country, but you can also get insight into their take on the experience of the the destination that you're sharing. Because of course, when you look at a destination from two different cultural perspectives, you see different things. So my experience with hostels is that it's such a rich experience in terms of the discussions that can take place. And you learn about yourself, you learn about the destination and you learn about whoever you're speaking to and where they're from. I, it's rich. <laughs> no, it's, it's the best. It's the, it's the best education and the best uh, adventure is the moment uh, you walk into a hostel, and I've been doing this now for 12, 20 years, and I'm 42, and I'm already at an age where people think I'm the old guy in the room, but every time I walk in, it's it's like falling in love again. It's just the greatest feeling. Um, I saw a question from one of your, uh, the listeners asking about the name of the hostel. It's the Independent Hostel and Suites. Uh, they also have a hostel in Porto, which is another city I know you love very much. Uh, it's a it's a hostel called the House of Sandeman, and it's a, a in a port wine cellar a hostel. So the Sandeman developed a hostel where you can stay in a port wine cellar with private rooms, but also the the dorm beds are made out of port wine barrels. <laughs> so it's it's incredible. It's like and you can do port wine tasting in, in uh, on the on the terrace of the hostel. And then they do the, the dinner with locals, which is a popular feature in all Portuguese hostels where you'll get three course meal for 12, 13 euros with a glass of wine. It's just the best. Okay, that might actually convince me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had to mention wine and, uh, and that's Portugal. Portugal is, is fabulous for wine. If you love wine, it's, uh, it's a country of wine lovers and all the hostels uh, you can get great get great wine at very affordable prices. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Porto is known for port. So yeah, Fabulous. great. White Portonics. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you mean you already kind of entered into this, but maybe you can share with us some of the more unique hostels you've stayed at. Well, I've been talking about the House of Sandemand. Um, let's jump country. Let's go to Copenhagen. There's a place called the Steel House in Copenhagen, which is a, a former iron workers uh, factory converted into a hostel. And it has these beautiful pot style beds that are now uh, becoming very popular in 
in accommodations all around the world. And the pod style concept came from Japan, where it's a, like a small enclosed pod with your with the privacy curtain. So you're enclosed in a space and it's basically what you would pay for a dorm bed, but you have your own space, your light. Uh, so they have these pod style beds, but they have a swimming pool on the ground floor. They have a gym inside. They have the most beautiful kitchen. Um, it's like the largest hostel kitchen I can ever imagine. They have incredible facilities and they do a good karaoke night too, if you love uh, a good sing-along. And the cheapest beer in Copenhagen, because Copenhagen is very expensive, as uh, not as expensive as Stockholm, but it's still expensive. But they have the cheapest beer in town. So it's a really lovely place, a really good hostel. Um, other hostels, uh, I was in Ericeira, which is just up from, from Lisbon, a beautiful coastal village with fish, popular with fishermen, and now it's a popular surfing spot of the most popular surfing spot in the world now, Ericeira. There's a beautiful hostel there called Action Ericeira, which I would really recommend if you are into nature outdoors. Uh, other places, where can we go? Rome, the Beehive, a uh, very old favorite of mine run by Steve and Linda. Uh, they run a hostel slash hotel slash guest house where they have uh, beautiful, uh, they do local food evenings where local chefs come in and cook. They specialize in vegan food. So if you're vegan, it's the place to be. They have a good selection of wines and they do storytelling classes where they get storytellers coming all over Rome to do storytelling, talking about travel stories. So the Beehive in Rome, uh, I recommend. Um, wow, where, where else can we go? Uh, the Yard in Bangkok. Uh, tourism is slowly opening up back to Thailand, so many of you might be considering going to Asia. I'm going in January, hopefully, fingers crossed. And the yard is a, an oasis in Bangkok. It uh, has its own garden. They do yoga classes. They do a local market with local tradesmen coming and selling their stuff in the hostel. So they're a, kind of a platform so, for supporting the local community. So it's great to see, you know, that's what I love about these hostels, that all these hostels are not just about being a place to stay, but they stand for something. They're about supporting community and supporting locals and bringing locals in. And this is where I think the magic happens when you are visiting, that you get to interact with locals and learn about the way people live. And it's not just about having a beer and getting drunk, it's so much more these hostels. So yeah, those are my favorite places. Wow. Oh, yeah, we were on a couple of continents there, so that's that's pretty good. <laughs> any, any hostels in North America that you've been to or heard about that are special? I know that North America uh, is not as progressive in terms of hostels, but I'm just wondering if there's anything. It's changing a lot. So one of the most famous hostels in Iceland called Kex, which is uh, in a biscuit factory in Reykjavik, has just opened a hostel in Oregon in, in Portland, which is oh. stunning. It's beautiful. So I would definitely... Uh, keep your eyes out if you're going to Portland, go to Kex. Um, other hostels uh, in Montreal, I'm a big fan of the HI Hostel in, in Montreal. Uh, when I was there for um, the jazz festival there, I stayed at the HI. It's a really, really nice hostel. I'm a big fan of the HI Hostels, I think, especially in North America. When I've in, been, been in Boston, in New York, I've stayed at the HIs there. And they're lovely hostels, beautiful design, very nice locations. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. And obviously there's the Freehand, which is, it's a hostel, but it's more of a hotel than a hostel. And the prices are quite steep, but they're incredible. Like the one in Miami has this bar called the Shaker, which is the bar in to go to in Miami. And it's a hostel, but it's, some of these places are moving slightly away from the hostel concept. They're more about a beautiful space with a bar and dorms, but they they lack that slight essence of, of, of what a hostel really is. So, um, so yeah, uh, I have mixed feelings sometimes about the evolution of hosteling, which is something I think we're going to talk about. Yeah. But uh, they're beautiful spaces. If, you, if you're interested in design style, um, definitely recommend the Generator in Miami, too, is an incredible uh, hostel there. Uh, the Freehand also has one in Chicago, which is stunning. So I really recommend that if you're if you're interested, but uh, for the real hostel experience, yeah, I would, I would say um, the places I mentioned, the HIs are great. I have a question, um, very practical question from Nancy, who says that uh, she hasn't stayed at a hostel, 
um, and she's just wondering if she doesn't have a private room, what can she do with her, what does she do with her luggage when she's out sightseeing during the day? Fantastic. So Nancy, uh, um, I do hope you do consider staying in a hostel soon. Um, the good thing about dorms is that they all have uh, private lockers and drawers right beneath your, your dorm bed. You'll either have it right beneath your bed or you'll have it separately in the corner of the room with a secure padlock. So always carry a padlock with you. It's the one thing which will save you a lot of money because sometimes you might have to buy it or rent it out. Carry a padlock with you whenever you're, whenever you're traveling and you can securely keep your items in there. And, and yeah, a lot of these hostels have cameras fitted in. So not inside the rooms, but in the places. So there's a lot of security. It's another issue that a lot of people have misgivings about hostels, but nowadays hostels are extremely secure. They have private secure, uh, thick doors, secure entry into the rooms, into the, the, the floors of each hostel. You have to have a key card to get in. So it's very difficult. And uh, yeah, so I hope that helps answer the question. Any other questions, Tracy? Not so far. Not so far, yeah. So um, there, you mentioned generator. So there are some companies that are managing, running multiple hostels around the world. And then there are these independents. And uh, are there, is, is there a chain of hostels, if you want to call it that, that you consider to be reliable in terms of, um, you know, uh, being a, a beautiful hostel, uh, affordably priced and safe, and, you know, maybe not crazy party, <laughs> that kind of right. thing. Like, I think of Generally HI, the but HI is kind of a, a lot great. of independent hostels. Yeah, a lot of independent hostels. I think uh, Wombats is a chain that I really love in, in Europe. They have hostels in Vienna. They have a fabulous hostel in London. It's probably my favorite hostel in London in the east of London, great location near Shoreditch. Um, they have hostels in Munich. It's the best hostel in Munich. It's right beside the train station. And uh, they have a wonderful bar called the Wom Bar. Uh, they had a particularly tough time during COVID. They've just reopened again. Uh, so I'm really happy to see them thriving and doing well. It's, it's spelled as Wombats, like the animal. Um, it's really cool hostel. Um, other hostels, I'm staying at a Selena at the moment, which is a very popular hostel chain that attracts particularly to people who are interested in remote working and nomads. That's something that some of your listeners might be interested in or considering a remote trip or taking a month out of work and staying and working in some of these hostels. And Selena is very good. They have a very good facilities in terms of co-working space. They have a bar, they have uh, yoga classes in the morning. So Selena is, is, is a really good chain, especially in, in South America. That's the hostel chain I would recommend. And prices are good. Cool. Cool. So how, uh, how do you suggest that people research a hostel? So as I mentioned at the beginning, sometimes you might choose a destination based on the hostel because some of the ones that we've heard about, I think are worth going to uh, and then making the destination work. But if you've got a destination mind, how do you suggest that uh, people find the hostel that they're going to like? I think um, when it comes to researching hostels, it's always good. Nowadays, you have a luxury of resources online where you can read reviews to get an idea. Uh, YouTube is also fantastic. Uh, I have filmed a few hostels, but I could do more of filming videos. And I think you, you can really quickly see hostel video reviews on YouTube. So that's always a great resource. Uh, and ask, ask friends, ask people, ask, 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 ask you, ask me, you know, I'm always uh, reachable on DM via Twitter or Instagram. And uh, I'm always happy to answer and the same I, you offer that help and service and a lot of other good bloggers we know, um, Sam and Audrey, that backpacker, uh, they're, everybody's super helpful. And so that's always, I think is, uh, is a recommendation from friends or people who have traveled are always the best recommendation. So, um, yeah. Well, and then really there's obviously the guidebooks, Lonely Planet. I hadn't thought of YouTube. 
I hadn't thought of YouTube as a as a research um, source for such. YouTube is incredible nowadays in terms of the quality and type of videos that you can find about whether it's food, whether it's um, tips on budget travel on, or hostel reviews. There's everything on YouTube. It's uh, it was my best friend during lockdown. It's that's why I traveled the world, <laughs> seeing so many places on on, on YouTube. Now, typically we do this at the end, but since um, you've just raised it, uh, what's your, uh, your address on, on YouTube and what's your handle on Twitter and Instagram? Because people are going to uh, thinking of this right this moment. Yeah, so, so Budget Traveler, that's spelled with two L's. It's not with one L like uh, in Canada. It's the two L's. I think that's the British. Uh, so it's Budget Traveler, uh, one word uh, on Instagram, on Twitter on Facebook and on YouTube, it's also Budget Traveler. Uh, okay. You'll see my happy smiley face and the profile picture. So hopefully you'll recognize it. It's got, yeah. I've got a couple more white hairs now, but otherwise it should, it should, it should look the same. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> you always look gorgeous with white, you make white hair look beautiful. You're like the Richard Gere of, of travel. You, you have this beautiful hair. I, I hope to have, a, have that when I'm old. Well, I won't have that here. But yeah. Not, I'm digging my hole here now. So. You, you have to know I'm going to use that now. The Richard Gear of Toronto. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way. She's going to kill another, me later uh, for saying this. <laughs> oh, I hysterical. have another question for you uh, from Sarah Kay, who is joining us live from Memphis, Tennessee today. Hello. Um, Hello. And she would love any tips on booking or reserving uh, hostels and wonders if most places require advanced reservations. Okay, I might lose a lot of friends and you might lose some clients here. I don't know if I should be saying this, but okay, here it goes. If you really want to get the best deal on a hostel or a hotel, um, look up the price on the on the booking website, uh, booking.com. Um, and then call up the hostel and, and uh, they will always give you 10 to 15% less than the price you see on booking.com. And most of them will appreciate you giving them the money directly to them rather than having to collect the money from booking.com. So uh, it's the unwritten rule that not many people tell, but it's, 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 it's knowledge amongst all the experts. So. Um, just check. Obviously, it's the, the it's in, if, always book with your credit card so that in case there is a cancellation or something, you can always get your money back from your credit card. You can claim it back, so that always gives you that that kind of uh, peace of mind. So always book with your credit card. But you know, your reputable hostels will always uh, will keep your details in in good faith and trust, so you can completely trust them with that. So that's the best way to do it if you can. Just drop them an email. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you don't have to pay any booking fees and you will get the, the booking commission that the, the platform gives to the, uh, to the to, takes away from the hostel, you'll get that 10% back. So. Yeah. And that is so important right now, especially given you know, the struggle that's been going on since uh, the beginning of COVID. Yeah. Right. They and really the, need every bit of support. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is that some of the more interesting hostels are not on the booking platforms. Right. No, so uh, many hostels can't afford the booking fees and they're not in a position to 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 give that away. And they're, as I said, times are very tough at the moment. You know, it's been many hostels have been closed for a year and they're basically some have sadly closed uh, during the lockdown. So it's been hard, but some have managed to reopen with the help of government support. So every penny counts. So any anything you can do to support them. Uh, uh, and there's so many things you can do in a hostel to, to support a hostel. There's the bar, there's the food and beverage, there's tours, experiences nowadays. More and more hostels are offering walking tours, food tours of cities. So there's so many ancillary things that you could do in destination when you're there at the hostel to support the hostel. So they really appreciate that investment. So, yeah. And of course, that also increases the social experience for a solo traveler. You know, when you go on a walking tour with someone, and uh, then you come back to the to the to the hostel. Then you've got the bar. You can sit down, have a drink, etc. It's great. It's it's just a simple thing. There's this welcome drink that many hostels offer, where you'll sit down, you'll get a free drink. Many hostels offer this, and when you sit down for the welcome drink with all the other fellow 
travelers in a hostel, you immediately get to talk, talking to people and make friends instantly. But the tours are also a great way of meeting other fellow travelers. And uh, also there are lots of food tours being run in, in, in many cities across the world where you can meet other travelers from other hostels too. So, so keep that in mind also. Yeah, yeah. So um, if there is one tip for when you are staying at a hostel, uh, to get the most of it, out of it, or one or two, you, you don't have to just go with one. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, what, what do you recommend in terms of you arrive at a hostel? What do you do to make sure that you really in, get the most out of what the experience has to offer? I think that the most important thing is to don't be shy. Ask. You'll be surprised how friendly, open-minded people are in a hostel. And the people that you see across the desk are travelers themselves. So most people working in hostels are travelers themselves who are traveling. Uh, many of them will be working through uh, schemes like World Packers where you can volunteer for your stay. And the reason why they're working in the hostel is because they want to meet people like you. They are, that's the whole purpose of their working in a hostel. So always remember that all the people around you are travelers yourselves. And that's what's the best thing about hostels is that they're all, there's a genuine, thirst and, and hunger for travel. So always ask tips whenever you need where to eat, where to drink. Don't be looking at Google Maps and trying to figure out where to go. Ask, talk. Uh, that's the best. You always get the best tips for food and drink in a hostel. I, you never go, go wrong. And yeah, and, and, and expertly place yourself in the middle of all the action. Make sure you get a good seat early on in the evening at the bar. And trust me, all the people will come to you and talk to you and you will meet everybody. So it's just, and don't forget the happy hour. Many hostels have happy hours where you can have uh, a good local beer or something at a very good price. And that's when all the magic happens because that's when everybody comes for, the, for a drink at the bar. And then usually people start, the, start their evening at the bar at the happy hour and then start going around town. So you'll catch the, the wave uh, then. So yeah, don't, uh, don't lock yourself in the room. As an introvert, I do find it a bit tricky, right? Because Hi. there are a lot of extroverts at, uh, at hostels for certain. But because there are a lot of extroverts, they usually come and collect us introverts. <laughs> so I don't find it that exactly. bad. No, that's the thing is that, you know, it's, it's, so, it's such a relaxing and, and, and if you st the, the, the trick is to stay in the right hostels. And I also recommend one tip is stay in small intimate hostels. Uh, which are easy to interact and meet people. And not every hostel is a party hostel. That's another misnomer. There are these hostels, which I call quiet hostels, where they're quiet in the sense that they're not loud, noisy for party people and for they don't host groups, but they're social places where you can sit down, have a meal, cook a meal together, read a book, play board games. So many things happening, uh, cooking classes, so many things happening in a hostel. So don't think that hostels are just for one type of traveler. Um, they accommodate all kinds of travelers, so. Yeah, yes, the, the, the communal atmosphere, the communal tables in the kitchens and, and uh, yes, when you're cooking one meal and someone beside you is cooking another, um, there's that common activity uh, yeah. that, that just generates conversation. Yeah, and food is always the best way for getting to know people. So that's where I've made a lot of friends is through hostel kitchens. So, uh, so yeah, I carry my bag of spices with me wherever I go, and that's when the magic happens. Yeah, yes, I'm certain, and that's it, right? Because you're cooking differently than the person beside you, and that's a that's a conversation starter. I always, I was, and, I, and after one or two beers, I'm always promising to cook everybody, everyone in the in the hostel, which is always my downfall. As <laughs> my partner Sabrina will tell me, said, "Oh, Cash, you promised that you cook for everyone in the hostel last night." I was like, "Oh no." And then everybody's like hung over queuing up <laughs> and the next okay. day. So now we're so all going to be finding out your schedule so that we can land in that kitchen where you're going to cook for us. I'll, I'll keep you, try and keep you all updated on, on Instagram when I'm cooking next in the hostel. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, what, how do you anticipate hostels are going to evolve or you know, into 2022, what, what can we expect in the, in the, in the hostel scene? So the, the lines between hostels and hotels are blurring more and more. It's very difficult to tell the distinction between the two, but, but 
there is now a lot of exciting investment going on where uh, some of your listeners might be familiar with the hotel group Accor, one of the biggest hospitality brands mm -hmm. in the business. They launched a new hostel chain called Joe and Joe. They are in two of them in Paris. And I just went to their new property in Vienna, which is actually upstairs from the IKEA, new IKEA city store. So you're actually upstairs from an IKEA store. So you can walk out from the hostel down the escalator and you're in the IKEA store and you can have their famous IKEA breakfast for two euros 50, which is the best deal in Vienna. And Vienna's not expensive, but it's not cheap. So if you're going for Christmas markets, uh, that's a good place to stay and uh, that novelty. And they have a 500 square meter rooftop terrace where you can see the whole city and it has about 160 plants and it's beautiful. It's really nice. It's a magical place. I really impressed with, and they have a self-service beer taps and uh, they do dance classes and everything. It's incredible. And that's where the future of hostels is going is that more and more now, uh, you know, hotels are realizing that, uh, yes, it's called Joe and Joe with an E. And, 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 uh, and that's what the future of the industry is, is because it's such a dynamic, um, dynamic, you know, concept hostels you can have dance classes you can have a bar you can have a swimming pool you can have everything and it's open for everyone so this is not a situation despite a core being a hotel chain um this is not a what you would consider a hotel masquerading as a hostel this is a hostel it's a hostel but they, they call it something else they're calling it uh, an open house which i think is I like I like I like things to be called the way they are. I don't like you know, but they 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 see it as an open house for everyone. So they have a good the right idea. Okay. Uh, but but uh, it's a hostel. It has dorms, beautiful dorm rooms, really stylish. They have privacy curtains on the dorm beds so that you have your own space, and you're paying eighteen euros, seventeen euros in the heart of Vienna, and it's a great deal. You can't so, argue with that. Can't. And the bar is incredible and. And breakfast is nice. It's really, really good. Yeah, the, the whole pot idea is a wonderful uh, development in the in the hostel space. I first encountered it in Japan, like you say, and uh, to see that spreading around the world, it's it really ups the level of comfort. Yep, in in Edinburgh too, our favorite old city, Code, a very nice hostel. They have pod, just pod style beds uh, are right in the heart of the Royal Mile. It's an incredible uh, hostel there. And um, it's in right in the, it's, it's, it's the former court room where they used to pass judgment on all the, uh, all the, it used to be a, a, a you know, a, a, it's similar to the clink in London, which is another jail uh, converted into a hostel. But yeah, you know, great space, code. If anybody's going to Edinburgh, I recommend it. How do you, how do you spell that? C O. C O D E code. Simple as like, that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. Um, Catherine just commented that what we're talking about now um, really fits very well with our speaker from last month, who was talking about immersive travel mm -hmm. and uh, experiential um, travel, and not just sightseeing, but really, you know, uh, really getting into the soul of a, of a destination. Yeah, I think that's a I really think, good point. I'd like to I say we've landed that way. But. There you go. I think that's the way travel is going now, especially after COVID. We're more interested in real people, real places, real experiences, and investing our money in places where our money makes a difference. And I think that's what I care more about hostels, is that all these hostels are embedded in the community and they help their community. And that's why I think we should... Uh, spend more time and so yeah yeah, yeah I, I i agree and it's 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 really interesting because you know a hotel is basically a place to lay your head and maybe work on your computer and it doesn't have that experiential element to it it might be really nice right it might be beautiful but it doesn't have this rich experience associated with it whereas hostels do in so so many ways um like like you say with dance classes yoga classes you know cooking collectively um, mm. There's just so many ways to have your stay be more than just a stay. Yeah. 
I was thinking a lot about the topic of sustainability and I realized that budget travelers are naturally sustainable travelers because they always are investing their time in businesses that are local. So hostels, independent hostels are always local businesses that invest in the community. So all your money that you invest, whether you're going on the walking tour, whether you're staying in the hostel, it all goes back into the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so that's also an important topic to remember that sustainable travel is not just about taking the train versus flights. There's so many other ways you can really uh, make a positive impact on the place you visit. And uh, so, yeah, Absolutely. plus one for hostels there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just had this flashback to Ljubljana, right? And uh, Simon and I were on our, our honeymoon and we stayed in a hostel, right? <laughs> because it's it Lisa. Did you stay in the jail hostel? Yes. <laughs> yeah, great. It's still going. It just reopened. It just re... Just had a fresh look of paint and modernized a little bit more so but it still exists and still going strong yeah oh that's great yeah it's it's quite a fun space so yeah i mean it can be it's hostels are not just for saving money by any means they are for enriching travel so that's that's great is there anything that i've missed cash that you think that people should know about hostels no i just think I think we've covered everything. I think we've we've covered the fact that they're not just party hostels, there's quiet hostels, there's food hostels, uh, gourmet hostels if you're a food lover, especially we mentioned Portugal. Um, there are hostels which uh, <laughs> have uh, a shrine dedicated to David Hasselhoff, the circus, you know, my beloved in Berlin. If you're in Berlin, there's a, there's a hostel with a shrine and a museum dedicated to David Hasselhoff because uh, the Hoff saved Berlin and and the wall came down because of the half you know so there's a, a special affinity to David Hasselhoff so yes uh, we, we cannot finish any talk about hostels without talking about the circus <laughs> so so many so many great hostels to talk about uh, yeah <laughs> so my next trip is going to be New Zealand do you have a recommendation I haven't been to New Zealand I have <gasps> absolutely well then that's I've my heard thought, that isn't it they were, I heard there are some cracking hostels in, in there's a really good HI, a couple of HI hostels there, but you have to tell me. Okay, that's my job. I will report back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have questions? We don't have, uh, well, we had a question about New Zealand, but nobody can answer it. <laughs> oh, really? Someone else is going to New Zealand as well? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I actually did stay at a hostel, one of the uh, uh, high hostels in uh, Auckland, and it was, I mean, it's, it was really nice. I mean, it was essentially located, although it was up, there's two of them. One of them is at the top of a hill, and the other one isn't. The one I chose was at the top of a hill. It's a rather steep hill. <laughs> so <laughs> if, you, if you're trying to choose between the two, maybe choose the one that's not the top of the hill, because uh, it was quite a trek, uh, but it was great. I mean, it was, all, as you got, had mentioned before, all the hosteling international properties are usually probably the nicest hostels in any city. So if you don't know where to go, or if you have any doubts, those are always your ready standbys. I always call it like the four seasons of the hostel world uh, in keeping with the luxury <laughs> theme. So, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, hostels. So that, that's, my, that's my brief report about the hostel in Auckland. <laughs> Magic, I need to go to, I need to get myself over there. Yeah, it's interesting, the, the uh, you know, talking about HI and YHA in the UK, it's the predictability of these, because um, they're not chains, they're independent hostels that are, that are members. They're, 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 they're funded partially by the government and partially through ch charitable donations from members. So um, here's another tip that many people don't know that in Germany, I live in, in Germany, in Berlin, and uh, in Germany, we have our own network of uh, HI style hostels called the Jugendberg. I hope I pronounced this correctly. Maybe my German partner will correct me later. But um, these are beautiful hostels, and a lot of these are just like the YHA. These are all donated properties. So, for example, if anybody's going to Nuremberg for the famous Christmas markets, there's a beautiful hostel, which is a castle on top of the hill. So, it's the perfect location in Nuremberg. You just walk down from the hostel and you're straight into the Christmas market. And it's a castle. So you're actually living inside a castle. And uh, in many of these properties in Germany, the hostels, uh, the Jugendberg network are all castles. So actually I have a guide on my blog 
to castle hostels. If you want to go castle hostel hopping in Germany, there's some incredible places you can stay in. So that's like, you know, you can create your own fairy tale, literally. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that is so great. So we're going to need to get the link for that. And okay. uh, any other, you know, hostels that you've mentioned that you've got reviews on, we, we, will, we will share those links with everybody so yeah, that um, they Thank can you. look and be inspired by, uh, by the stay as opposed to, you know, maybe other things like towers and things of that nature. Let's get inspired mm -hmm. by the stay and being local and being connected to uh, the local yeah. community. Yeah. Cash, I'm gonna thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I know that, you know, when it came up to discuss the possibility of talking about hostels, like you're the guy <laughs> without doubt. So I really, really appreciate you joining no, us. No, it's been, it's been one of the great joys of my blogging career has been sharing stories of travel with you over the last few years and talking hostels. And it's great to see that after all these years of knowing each other, we still have a spark in our eye when we mention hostels. It's a good sign that the, the heart is still beating well and we're still um, excited about life and about traveling, about hostels. So yeah, um, can't wait I'll to report do it back to you on, I'll report back to you on New Zealand. Please do. I, I'll even I'm try really to take video. Here. I'll even try. Which is not my thing, you know that. I'll even you could do it. You could do it. You're the one of the most in, in, incredibly smart, and you never grow young. You're always enthusiastic. So life is for trying and learning and doing crazy things. So I like it. Life is for trying and learning, and doing crazy things. So, okay. Thank you very, very much, Cash. I really appreciate it. So I'm now going to hand it over.